And a good day, all of you. Sean Henderson, Pierre, the Beverage Ramble, back again with you. Another Beverage Ramble edition today from our friends at Breckenridge Brewing Company, the Vanilla Porter. I've been meaning to do this for some time now, almost, almost about a month now. But anytime I did, it was just something that just came up, and this and that. And you know, I'm gonna get my can open. I'm not using the jaws today. No jaws at all. Got to save the teeth, people. Got to save the teeth. Ugh. Anyway, there it is. Wow. All right. 3.8 out of 5 on on tap. Gets an 83 score on Beer Advocate. I brought this during Stout Sunday almost a month and a half ago. And I kept saying I was going to review it, but again, things just kept popping up here and there. So here's what the porter looks like, as you can see. This is the end quarter. Uh, let me see. Let me take, back that up. From the website, it says, from their words, that it is the, the traditional classic porter. A little bit of a roasted nut and some chocolate flavors, roasted barley, some malt. So they say it is the classic porter. We shall see. I gave it a high score when we did on, when we did the uh, Stout Sunday. Uh, with the guys, and um, it's been a while since I've had this, so it's when I had it, when I had it, so I've been like, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do the review. So, nice, nice traditional porter scent. It's quite good. I don't know, keep doing these weird moves. Nice scent, very definitely the chocolate I'm getting. Definitely the scent of uh, roasted malts. Mm, definitely a vanilla, without question, is there. So, yeah. let's have at it. Nice, good. Give that vanilla flavor there immediately. There is that porter. Oh, my porter, I mean, excuse me. The chocolate, definitely that roasted malt. I was having sort of a nice roasted almond. I'll say nut, maybe I'm guessing an almond, maybe a. Not roasted peanuts, but kind of a roasted almond nut or even a roasted pecans. A little in there. Small amount. Yeah, I had this in the fridge and maybe actually kept it out a little bit, but definitely the chocolate, definitely have, it's, it's very present. I would say 60, say about maybe 50% chocolate. And the vanilla flavor and then that roasted malt flavor is kind of balancing it really in the barley. Giving it a nice, clean, good taste to this. Not hard, overly sweet, which is a good thing. So, a little bite going down. Ain't the... Greatest port, I, you know, it's a good porter, a great but good one. Um, is, is you know maybe similar to Bell's style, Bell's porter, or the Founders porter, which is also quite good. Um, I was gonna say the Hershey's porter from Yingling, but that would had, but that was 
that, that was a that was a, 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 a an idea between Hershey's and the people who did you know who did the porter adding the, the Hershey's chocolate. So I mean, it's good, but I ain't gonna you know look at it as it was a cute idea, nice idea. It's still good. It's still popular. That Hershey's uh, using the Hershey's chocolate, the Yingling Porter. Um, Yingling has his own porter. I remember this liquor store had it right across the street for me, and uh, it, they had the case. I, I was not going to buy the whole case. I just like, no, nah, I'm just going to keep. If, if it was in singles, I definitely would get it. But a whole 12 pack of porter, that's just too much beer for me. You know, yes. Saying, I'm someone saying, hey, that's too much beer for that person. Yeah, that's too much beer um, for, for Porter. But um, Bell's Porter. Uh, Founders Porter, about the same, I mean, flavor, quality, I mean, both, both of the players I've mentioned, the, the, the Founders and the Bells are really good, and this is good too, it's a nice balance from everything, so nothing is overpowering anything in this, so, um, I've done three beers uh, from Bell from uh, Breckenridge. Uh, of course, the, the company's based in Colorado. Uh, bought out by AB InBev, the conglomerate, the mighty, mighty, mighty AB InBev in 2015. Um, so far, I like many of these, you know, deals that go down. Which is right at the same time I started doing my reviews, but around that time they had. Um, you know, like like most again, most I've always say when these mergers happen, these acquisitions happen with these companies, it's always about distribution, and it's all about I'm gonna push my beer as far this part of the country as I can, you know, nothing more, nothing less, and that's what usually happens. Um, they all very rarely come and buy, you know, take the company, and you know, we're gonna. And we're going to tweak this recipe, we're going to tweak that recipe, we're going to fix this and change that. And very rarely do those, those things tend to happen. I mean, we've seen it a lot. I mean, even recently with, with Stone being bought out, um, the people behind, of course, the Stone IPA and Eric and Bastard Ale. I think that was a, couple, a month ago or so that deal went down. Of course, we all know um, with... Uh, Sam Calagion and uh, the people at um, Dogfish Head and Boston Beer Company, Jim Cook, you know, it's all about distribution and reach, plain and simple. So, oh, my beer's going to change. My beer ain't going to taste the same. What, what's going on here? What's going to happen? Oh, no, oh, no. Relax, guys. It doesn't, nothing happens to the beer connoisseurs. Um, Molson Coors. We have an agreement with Yingling. All to do all this distribution, but Yingling is firmly in the family. It's not going to be sold to anyone. For now. For now. But keeping it as keeping it as is. So um I with the beers I've done for them, I did three. I did the juice, um, I did the juice drop series. The Juice Drop Hazy IPA, um, and then the Juice Drop Hazy Imperial IPA, and um, I did their Christmas um, Ale back in December or whatever it was. Yeah, back in December. December, January, whenever, or February I might have done it. Or even before Christmas, I know, one of, the, one of the times. But anyway, did that. So I've had three things from them, so I have not been disappointed or, you know, you know, put off by any of the things that they've done. So I think they've really done a good good job. Um, and yeah, this is a really enjoyable porter, folks. Uh, and this is, um, I mean, for I mean, saying being vanilla, obviously, I would think be more of a, perfect for a dessert. But I could actually pair it with a with a with an entree again. Porters, you know, a, a chili, a, a, a nice. Nice steak, a nice, um, you know, Chateaubriand, something, something with, with beef that can go well because the vanilla is balanced, but it's not overly power, power, powering, or powerful. 
overly taking the beer. So you ain't going to get that overly sweetness. But I think this is good. Nice balance. Where usually other porters tend to... More dry. More... More kind of, you know, simple, you know. The traditional roasted malts, barley. You get that coffee flavor. You may get maybe a little hint of chocolate, but not much. So you can go either way as a dessert beer... Or we can go paired with an entree. Um, I, me, I'll pair with a, you know, you know, you know, meat and potatoes, red meat, you know. Yeah, it would, it would, would, would pair well. So that's just me, folks. So whatever. But in any event, um, pretty good. I'm gonna go B plus. I think I'm gonna go eight point five. For the Breckenridge Vanilla Porter, a really good, if you can look at it as a dessert beer or just a regular porter, or you want to pair it with a dessert, pair it with a, you know, a nice meal, you can go, can't go wrong with either one. So I'm going to go 8.5, so this is a B plus, four line from B to B plus for the Vanilla Porter, really good job by Breckenridge Brewing Company. Check it out, based in Colorado, you may like or not, oh well. John Henderson, Pierre of the Beverage Ramble 10. Keep on watching as always. Cheers. Live, laugh, and love. Vanilla Porter. Breckenridge. Vanilla. Porter. Porter. Porter.